Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra's 2024 season launch, both to our audience here in Hamer Hall and to those of you joining us live on YouTube. My name is Nick Bochner and I'm the Head of Learning and Engagement at the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra and I'm very happy to be joined here by my colleague Catherine Bartholomew's Plows. We'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're gathered, the people of the Eastern Kulin Nation, and pay our respects to their elders past, present, and emerging. Tonight, we're revealing our 2024 season. It's a huge year of nearly 150 concerts, featuring extraordinary artists and some of the greatest music ever written. The 2024 season is a celebration of music's ability to tell stories that move and inspire us. Throughout the season, we'll be performing music that showcases the storytelling capabilities of symphonic music, from works that evoke vivid imagery to works inspired by great literature and narratives. I think live music is always amazing, especially when the orchestra is like a hundred people. And when they collaborate together to make magic, it's just absolutely amazing. Like the journey that they take us on from when we enter and the lights sparkle like stars in the lobby, the crowd buzzes excitedly, the orchestra is tuning up to the end where they take the last bow and they're graduating each other. It's always an amazing experience. It's like being in a meditation. Those two hours are two special hours. It's not just that the MSO performs that music, but you can try to connect also with the musicians and that brings it alive. It's incredibly uplifting to me to be there with those people who are all enjoying the evening. Everyone's welcome. You see older people, younger people, bring in people of that level of diversity is, is, is what you need. My younger son, he started coming to those concerts when he was two. I would just let him be in the aisle and of course he had no inhibitions then and he would just dance around and float around to the music and just do whatever moved his body. I could see how impactful it was for him. His experience was really just like mine. It's like a small community. Suddenly in this evening you are part of the, like a small community community or family together. Had I not been introduced to music, there would be a lot of emotions I wouldn't know existed because music makes you feel more. I feel like music is like food for the soul. It feeds you like absolutely nothing else. And I really love food. To introduce the season tonight, we've assembled an amazing lineup. You've already heard our orchestra at work with Chief Conductor Jaime Martin, and Jaime will be back on stage in just a minute. We'll also hear from one of the wonderful composers who'll be writing new music for us, and some of our musicians will take us through their 2024 highlights. Brochures will be available at the end of tonight's event, all events will be on our website, and the box office team will be ready to take your bookings in the St Kilda Road foyer. The 2024 season will mark 21 years of the wonderful partnership between the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra and our principal partner, Emirates. To celebrate this milestone, please welcome Emirates Senior Executive Linda Costantini. Linda, welcome. Thank you, Catherine. This is such an enduring partnership. Why does Emirates feel that it is so important to support the MSO? Well, we started flying into Victoria back in 1996 and the Victorian community embraced us very quickly and we in turn think it's really important that we um, support the vibrant Melbourne arts and uh, culture community. And I think you would agree that the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra is one of the best orchestras in the world, so worthwhile supporting. It, it also relates to our commitment to Australia and to arts and music globally. We as an airline bring people together, music brings people together, and I think the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra do that brilliantly. Um, so it's a very proud sponsorship. And I would like to think that in our small way that we assist and nurture the orchestra in bringing us all the gift of live music. 
Absolutely. Thank and you. can I just confirm that it wasn't an Emirates aircraft that delayed the pianist? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for clarifying. <laughs> This partnership has many benefits for our subscribers and members. For those who don't know, what are those benefits? Well, it gives us the opportunity to showcase the masterwork of the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra on board our aircraft. Um, uh, sorry, our in-flight entertainment system has the work of the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, and so therefore we can showcase that to millions of our customers to enjoy. Um, and we also provide um, MSO supporters the ability to get a discount when booking Emirates on the MSI website. Very important. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining You're us welcome. tonight, thank Linda, and thank you for your 21 years of support. <laughs> thank you for having me tonight. Now, please give a warm welcome to Chief Conductor of the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra, Jaime Martin. Welcome. How are you? Very nice to see you. Good to see you, Jaime. It's wonderful to have you back in Melbourne for your third visit this year. I've got to ask you, is Melbourne starting to feel like home yet? Of course. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> Pretty much no, that. But, you know, it's, it's more than that. I mean, it's, um, I, I love it so much. You know, it is such a... Um, well, of course, the orchestra. I love, I, I love working with... Um, with this orchestra. And then I love finishing working with the orchestra and going around Melbourne. I mean, what can I say? Um, I love uh, food and coffee. I, I really like coffee, which is very lucky because then I am in the right place. But I love walking around. You know, two, two days ago, or I think maybe it was three days ago, in the evening, I went to the botanical gardens to see the, the beautiful light show. And oh, it's so beautiful. There is a moment, I mean, I'm sure you know the botanical gardens, and there is a moment that uh, at the end, you can see the, the skyline and the, the city, and it looks so beautiful. You know, it's just a, I love walking in the South Bank, and I love going to the uh, South Melbourne market. One of my favourites too. Really I really like that. And in Fitzroy, I love walking around all the galleries, and I found one or two very nice brunch places. So one no, I, I, Melbourne is a, is a city I I am really feel incredibly welcome already in my wonders around the city. Uh, in many occasions, I had people that have been to the concerts and they they have stopped and said hello, which I really appreciate. So please, if you are around and see me, please say hello. I really appreciate that. <laughs> okay, lovely. Let's talk about 2024. Mm -hmm. You will be conducting 12 programs, and these really have been the inspiration for the entire season. So can you talk us through what you'll be conducting with the MSO in 2024, starting with your first program in February? Well, in February, um, we are going to open the season, my season, I mean, the, my first concert with the orchestra, um, with Mahler Symphony No. 3. And the reason we have chosen, or I have decided, together with the orchestra, to go into the world of Mahler again is, you know, in my opening year, I did uh, Mahler Symphony No. 1, and I really loved to the sound uh, of, of the orchestra for, for Mahler. This season, a few months ago, we did Mahler Symphony No. 5, which I thought was um, thrilling. This, this orchestra is so incredibly suited for this music. So, since we are continuing with Mahler, so next year we will have Mahler 3, and of course we need for that the ladies of the uh, MSO Symphony Chorus, which is absolutely fantastic. So this will be the first of many opportunities to work with the chorus next year. Absolutely, and <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> chorus they are wonderful. <laughs> and uh, amazing American mezzo-soprano Rayhan Bryce Davis as well. Uh, the next week will be the Ryman Healthcare season, season opening gala with uh, Alban Gerhardt playing the cello. Yes, but for this concert, again, we are going to, to use the Melbourne 
symphony chorus, which, as I said, is marvelous. And we are going to play one of the most uh, popular pieces. But, and the reason we are doing this is not because it's one of the most popular pieces, but it's a very important piece. And, and I think it's a special piece to play. And I think it's wonderful for the audience to, to listen to this piece, and it's wonderful for the orchestra. So we are going to do uh, Holst, uh, the, the Planets which is a fantastic music, but we have chosen to do something special with this, this year with the planets, because as you know, Holst uh, missed one very important planet. In, and so we have asked uh, Deborah Cheaton to, to write Earth to complete the planets. So. <laughs> And, and I think that that will be a, really a very interesting addition to the very familiar piece. In the first uh, half of, um, of that concert, we will have um, Al Alban Gerhardt playing the wonderful and melting uh, Elgar cello concerto. So I think I'm really looking forward to do the planets with this orchestra and to play again with Alban, which is a fabulous cellist. You are a cellist. He's, he has been here before. Yeah. He's, he's, he's wonderful. Absolutely admire him. Well, Tremendous. So we'll all look forward to this. I know, I certainly do. The, um, the next program you will perform with us also contains a lot of English repertoire, but this time in our town hall. Yes, which uh, I really look forward to that because it will be my first time. It will, yeah. And, until now, all the concerts I have done with this orchestra are in the Hamer Hall. Actually, I have been also in Monash, mm -hmm. but I've been to uh, Geron or I've been to Mildura in our regional uh, outings, which I love also. Um, but this time I will get to know the, the town hall, which I think is, I'm really looking forward yeah. to uh, that. It used to be the, the home of the orchestra before this uh, Hamer Hall was well, built. Well, you know, so I've never important. been in. I've only seen mm. photographs and it looks beautiful. It's very beautiful. So I am really very excited to explore the, the acoustics. And for that, um, we have chosen to play another piece that I think is um, wonderful and very thrilling for both the orchestra and the audience, which is uh, Elgar Enigma Variations. That, that includes this incredibly well-known Nimrod in the middle. And we will start the, the program with um, Britain, the young person's guide for, of the orchestra, mm -hmm. which I don't know. I mean, th this is not a piece for children uh, to understand what an orchestra is. I think it's a wonderful uh, showcase mm -hmm. of what an orchestra can, can do. I always find the sound of that piece <gasps> completely uh, thrilling, you know? The last, actually, the last time I heard that live was um, in Santander, my hometown, with the London Symphony, with Simon Rattel. So this is a piece they, they took on tour mm. and proudly present. It, it's a concerto for orchestra, really, it's isn't it? absolutely a concerto for orchestra. Then uh, to complete the first half, we will do again one of the really beautiful pieces in the literature, which is the, um, the Lark Ascending by Fawn Williams. So we will have a uh, young person's guide, Lark Ascending, and Enigma Variations. I think this will be a good way to go to meet the town hall. Yeah, it's going to be, it, it'll be beautiful. The, in the following week, um, we're going to be joined by uh, some younger musicians from the Australian National Academy of Music, and you're going to scale one of Strauss's monumental tone poems. Yes, and actually, I, I would like to uh, have an opportunity to, to say how much I value this, um, this collaboration with the students of ANAM. Um, it is always, I think it for us, for professional musicians to work together with, uh, with the professionals of the future, you know, students at a very high level. In a way, this makes us, uh, puts what we do in perspective. And suddenly, uh, you, you know how it is, sometimes uh, musicians in the orchestra have played Heldenleben uh, many times, but suddenly they are going to be playing next to people that have never played it. And then 
somehow they will get this kind of excitement of almost discovering a, a piece through the eyes of somebody who doesn't know the piece. I think uh, Heldenleben is a, a hero's life. It's, um, it's a wonderful piece. And again, after doing, uh, just a few months ago, uh, at the beginning of this second season, I've been with the orchestra, we did um, uh, Alpine Symphony. And I really enjoyed it so much doing Strauss with the orchestra. That's why I didn't think twice before uh, deciding to put Helen Leiber next year. It's going to be great. They're a really fantastic Strauss orchestra. In the middle of the year, you will return to us and continue your exploration of uh, Vorjak symphonies. Yes, and this is something very special for me and at the moment for the whole MSO. Um, some of you came earlier on to our uh, open rehearsal and we were working on uh, Vorjak Symphony Number no. 6. This is uh, part of a collaboration we have with the London Symphony Orchestra and um, we are working on a, a Vorjak uh, Symphony cycle to be released by the LSO Live uh, label. So the first of these uh, CDs uh, will be Symphony Number no. 6 and 5, the 6 we are doing now. Five will be uh, coming um, uh, November. And then uh, next year in that uh, concert we are talking about, we will do uh, Vorjak Symphony Number no. 8, which I love particularly. I used to be a flute player and was one of the biggest flute solos mm -hmm. in the repertoire. So I, I am very, my heart is very close to this symphony. Um, the reason we are recording um, the whole Vorjak cycle is, uh, I mean, it's a wonderful music. I think it's a fantastic instrument to show uh, the, the potential of this orchestra and, and how uh, engaged uh, the musicians can be with this music. I think it's completely thrilling uh, music. You, you said that you didn't know Borjak 6. I don't know if you heard a little bit. I heard a little bit. I have to admit, I've not heard it so often because it's odd that it doesn't get played as many as those well, last three. I mean, the thing is that that's the thing. I mean, Borjak, we all know. Right? Borjak, New World Symphony, we know the Cello Concerto, we know uh, some of the amazing music, Rusalka, the wonderful opera. But there is, uh, there is music by Borjak. I mean, how often do you hear Symphony Number no. 2 of Borjak? Symphony Number no. 3? Symphony number one, they are fantastic. And I think it's not only fantastic, there is music that is worth um, showing, not only to ourselves, but to, to the audience, because it is amazing that it sounds familiar, but, uh, but at the same time is new, because we haven't played it. And possibly some of the symphonies will be first time the MSO performs. So it's extraordinary that we might have some Vorjak premieres, <laughs> which is not uh, what the people expect. Uh, together with this Vorjak 8 in that concert, we are going to have one of the fantastic pianists uh, that um, uh, I have really admired for a long time, uh, Denis Kotsukin, and he will play the Rachmaninoff Second Piano Concerto. And before that, we'll start with the uh, overture of Ruslan and Ludmila by Glinka. So, good. I am particularly happy with that. <laughs> well, the thing is that it's, it's terrible to talk about programs because I'm happy with all the programs. That's why we are doing them. <laughs> I mean, it's, and then it's, it, it, it is almost like picking things. I mean, uh, you know, each of these, um, you know, we, we spend so much time thinking, oh, what we are going to do, what solo is, how. And um, I am very sorry that every time I talk about the program, I say I'm very happy about it, but it's the things that I am. <laughs> um, so. Well, the following week will be our Ryman Healthcare Winter Gala featuring Carmina Burana, which needs no, no introduction to this audience. Well, Carmina Burana, again, is a fantastic um, um, way to show also not only the orchestra, but the MSO chorus. Um, you know, this is a piece, Carmina Burana, that uh, I'm sure all of you know the piece. When I was a, a young boy, when I was a student, I used to listen to that all the time. And then sometime, somehow, it was a period in my life that I completely forgot about the piece. And 
And recently I did it again, uh, like last year or two years ago, and I had so much fun. Because it's, it's, it's a piece full of rhythm. Um, and I, I find it incredibly alive, and, and I, I think it's wonderful. And I can imagine what the sound will be with the wonderful MSO chorus. To complete the program, actually this, we are going to start with Strauss, Don Juan, and then play a piece by Peter Scalthorpe, which is um, the, title, the title of this piece uh, is Earth Cry. This is a piece that he wrote, uh, I think, I don't know if you remember what year, but... Uh, 1986. 1986, thank you very much, Catherine. And then later on, um, uh, Peter Scarthop met uh, William Barton, the amazing didgeridoo player. And at, at hearing him, he thought, wow, I have to, I am going to change my earth cry piece, and I'm going to convert this work into a didgeridoo concerto. So we are going to have in that concert William Barton on the stage with us performing this piece. And actually, one little fact, this will be um, in my third season with the orchestra, and will be the third time I work with uh, William Barton as a soloist. In each of my seasons, I had him as a soloist, so we are becoming uh, very good friends. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. He's a great musician. Another artist who we have a very close relationship with is Christian Lee, who in the following oh. week we have a wonderful uh, literature-inspired program. Christian Lee, wow. What can I say about Christian Lee? How, how old is he now? He's 15, 15, 16. When I played with him the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto last um, October in Sweden, and he was 15. And when you work with somebody of that age, but that immense talent, and it's not just talent, it's, uh, it's the intuition to do the right thing with the sound, with the music, fantastic. So I am very thrilled to, to work with him again here in, in his home in Melbourne. And he will play a piece that I think it will show that he has more than four, five fingers in each hand because he's going to play, he's going to play the Paganini Violin Concerto, which is absolutely incredibly hard, and he will play it because he can do it. And then he is fabulous. And to complete that program, we are going to go to the world of uh, Romeo and Julia, which uh, will start with Romeo and Julia by Tchaikovsky, the Fantasy Overture, which um, I particularly love. And in the second half, we will do the Prokofiev uh, suite of the ballet, um, Romeo and Julia that uh, all of you know, but I will, uh, Prokofiev wrote different suites with uh, fragments from the ballet. Uh, for this particular occasion, I will do my own suite with a combination of different numbers from the ballet and hopefully try to go in order as, as the drama in the ballet happens. So that would be, um, you know, two Romeo and Julias in one evening. Mm. Um, lots of passion. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, it's, uh, you know, we should do at some point the Romeo and Julia by Berlioz. I like that very much also. But anyway, we'll talk about that for the future. Note it down for next yeah. time. <laughs> right. And of course, you will return at the end of the year for a very special festival. Yes. Um, you know, um, we realize that uh, 2024, um, we celebrate, and I say celebrate, is the 200 years of the premiere of the Symphony Number no. 9, the Choral Symphony by Beethoven. And then, this is a piece we wanted to do. Um, we wanted to program Beethoven 9. But, but then, talking about Beethoven 9, then we realized that actually the big 250 celebration of Beethoven that was three years ago, it got all, all this Beethoven celebration was stopped because of the um, pandemic. So we never managed to really celebrate that. So we are using the opportunity of the 200 years of the premiere of Beethoven Symphony Number no. 9 
to do a complete Beethoven cycle. So we are going to do a complete uh, Beethoven cycle in three weeks. Um, so it will be an opportunity to hear all of the Beethoven symphonies in a very short period of time, which uh, I think puts in perspective what uh, genius yes. like. And the, uh, you know, there is something about doing a mini festival like that, that I think, I think, it's, uh, I think it's a good opportunity, you know, to do it. I mean, we could have done it across the year to have one symphony in January, one in March, one, but I think it's something extraordinary about here in these symphonies. And then especially when the whole cycle, the culmination of the cycle is with the mighty symphony number nine. And um, we have decided, because of course, Beethoven Symphony Number no. Nine is about one hour of music, sometimes one hour and three minutes. <laughs> um, so it is a kind of thing that sometimes we think, oh, it's just too short to be on its own. Um, so it's always difficult to know what to do with, with Beethoven 9. The, you know, there we are. Sometimes it's done on its own and actually works very well. But we have decided for this particular occasion to put in the first half a new piece by a composer that I always enjoyed and actually I've done many of his pieces, uh, James Macmillan. And uh, we have a piece commissioned by the MSO, together with the London Symphony Orchestra, is a co-commission, is part of the partnership uh, between the London Symphony and the Melbourne Symphony. And we will perform in that particular occasion before Beethoven 9, um, his Concerto for Orchestra. And as a title, Concerto for Orchestra, uh, it will be a celebration of each instrument of the orchestra. It's a piece that will celebrate the MSO musicians, the MSO talent. And I think it will be a, a very interesting and good way to, to finish our, our season. So I think we, have, we are going to go through lots of music, lots of composers. Of course, these are the, the 12 weeks I will be here with the orchestra. The orchestra is doing many more weeks with incredibly exciting artists that you will be talking about. And the only thing I can say to you, because you are part of the team, but to all of you um, here in the Hamer Hall or at home, is that uh, we have created this season with all our love and um, thinking of us and thinking of you. We want to bring the best of music to all of you and to make the orchestra uh, develop and be as close to our audience as possible. So I hope you enjoy. Uh -huh. Well, you can really see you put your heart and soul into these programs. So thank you so much for creating this uh, magnificent season with us. And I know you said they're all your favorite children, but if I had to push you on this, which one would you recommend that they rush out and buy a ticket for now? Just pick one. Can you do it? It's not fair. No. <laughs> because as I explained earlier on, <laughs> every program I like. So you are asking me to pick one. I will pick one. I'll, and I will say that I am really excited about our opening concert, which is uh, Mahler Symphony Number no. Three. I think I would, if I were you, I'd rush to <laughs> buy tickets. And, and actually, the, the other reason I, I would pick the first concert is because you will enjoy it so much that they're going, you will rush to buy tickets for the second and third and fourth and fifth. So I think. Let's start with our first one, Mahler's Symphony No. 3, that will be my pick. There it is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's been a long day of rehearsals here, so we'll let you go, but thank you so much for joining us, honey. Thank you very much. And <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, Jaime just mentioned some of the amazing artists that will be performing with the MSO in 2024, and that includes many members of our artistic family. In 2024, the artistic family includes many familiar faces like principal conductor in residence, Ben Northey, and young artist in association, Christian Lee. We're all go also going to welcome some new faces. Renowned Australian composer Katie Abbott joins us as composer in residence, and she'll join us shortly here on stage to tell us a little bit about the music she's going to create for the MSO. We've also got Naomi Dodd, who was the winner of the 2023 Cybec Composers Program, and she'll be joining us as the Cybec Young Composer in Residence. Celebrated Baroque specialist Erin Helliard joins us as artist in residence in 2024, and he will lead the orchestra in three programs across the year, including our annual performances of Messiah. And Karen Kiriakou has been presenting our very favourite Jams for Junior program for 12 years, joins the artistic family as artist in residence for learning and engagement. Jaime just talked us through his amazing concerts with the MSO in 2024. There are so many other highlights. Our Sydney Meyer Free Concerts return, kindly supported by the Sydney Meyer MSO Trust. These are always a highlight of the season and we'll be announcing the programs for these concerts soon. Our East Meets West series will once again bring together great artists and music from across Asia, including two special events. The 11th annual Chinese New Year concert conducted by maestro Zhu Zhong with operatic superstar Hui Hei. And the wonderful Tan Dun returns to conduct his new choral concerto, Nine, Ode to Compassion, alongside the finale of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Jaime spoke about our Beethoven Festival, marking the bicentenary of Beethoven 9. And we are also presenting a Baroque festival, marking the 300th anniversary of Bach's great St. John Passion. Our Baroque festival, you'll be able to hear three different programs featuring music by Bach, Vivaldi and Handel, with amazing Australian artists, Erin Helliard and Samantha Clark, as well as international choral superstar, Stephen Layton. In October, the MSO will perform a special Holocaust Memorial Concert. Presented in partnership with the Australian War Memorial and featuring Bernstein's Symphony No. 3, Kaddish, this program will mark 80 years since the liberation of the first concentration camps in 1944. We've already mentioned some of the concerts in next year that will feature our very own MSO chorus. Marla III, The Planets, St John Passion, Bernstein Symphony No. 3, Tandon's 9, Beethoven 9, and Carmina Burana. They're going to be busy. You'll also be able to hear the chorus in our annual performances of Handel's The Messiah, and in a special concert featuring Jonathan Dove's The Passing of the Year and Joseph Twist's An Australian Song Cycle. What an amazing lineup of choral masterpieces with the MSO and MSO Chorus in 2024. Now, Australian music has always been part of the MSO's DNA, and the 2024 season is no different. It will feature many works by Australian composers, including by a composer in residence, Katie Abbott. We're going to talk to Katie Abbott now. Please welcome her to the stage. Lovely to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Uh, in our 2024 Metropolis New Music Series, it's going to be featuring your compositional project, Hidden Thoughts. Can you tell us about Hidden Thoughts? It's a project that you've been working on for some time. Yes, I wrote my first Hidden Thoughts piece in, or started in about 2015, and I never anticipated that there would be more than one. Um, so although these pieces are, um, the instrumentation is different and the topics that they address are different. What, what the, the thread is, I suppose, is that they all use text derived from the public in, in some way and uh, the audience is invited to contribute to the, the piece or the, the wider public is invited to, con to contribute. So, for example, in Hidden Thoughts 1, Do I Matter? I interviewed or I surveyed women for their hidden thoughts and I asked them, what have you learned to be brave about? What would you like to be brave about? Would you like to tell me about hidden thoughts or courage? And I just got hundreds of responses and then used the words of those surveys as the, 
as the text for the piece. And each, each of the Hidden Thoughts works are festival pieces that are large scale. Yeah, it's, it's a fascinating way to uh, create a piece of music. And th th what's the other Hidden Thoughts? Uh, what's so the Hidden Thoughts to Return to Sender That's uses the, the letters uh, in fact, I'm sure some of the audience wrote some of these letters. Julian Burnside asked Australians to write letters of support and encouragement to asylum seekers on Nauru well, quite a few years ago, but they were 2,000 of them were all sent back, mm. undelivered and unopened, and I had the great privilege of opening them and using the words of Australians to, uh, to set to music for this one hour one hour piece for narrator and voice and string quartet and that's going to be reimagined here for a string orchestra. My collaborator Maureen Johnson was a very key part of how we saw the text and how we presented mm. that. Yeah, I, I remember reading about that um, when you first created I'm really looking forward to seeing it here with us next year. So we're going to have these two existing works and you're going to create a third one. Can you tell us a little bit about that one? Mm -hmm. It's very artistically satisfying to be able to write three, three major works with a sort of common theme. And this one, Hidden Thoughts 3, is called Stories of Awe. And I think awe is, um, there's a lot of research about it. And although I want to shine a spotlight on that research, because I think it's really important part of well-being, research also sounds a bit boring. So the, the eight wonders of awe, of course, include music and art and design, but they all, it also includes things like um, moral beauty, when you see someone doing something kind or courageous, or collective effervescence, you know, when you go to the MCG and, you know, you're part of the crowd and that feeling of being part of something bigger than yourself. So I figure Hamer Hall, the MSO, um, we're going to collect stories. So the audience can get involved in this one, right? Yes, absolutely. So we've set up a, a survey and we're, we're requesting people to submit their stories of their experiences of awe, um, whether that be from nature or music or from epiphanies or being close to birth or death or wh whatever. We just want to know what they are and, so, and we'll turn that into, into the, the piece for narrator and voice and orchestra. Yeah, what an exciting idea. I think there'll be uh, a QR code in the brochure, so you must scan it um, and, and let us know what your stories of awe are. Um, but the Hidden Thoughts series, actually, I was going to say it's a, it's a great satisfaction to write three works. And presumably, you know, Beethoven might have thought that when he got to the Third Symphony. Do you think we'll get to Hidden Thoughts 9? It kind of feels like it might be, like, rounding out. But three, then, been, you know, if yeah. someone wants Hidden Thoughts 9, sure, I'll be up for that. <laughs> so the Hidden Thoughts series, they're not the only ones featured in our season. We've got another terrific storytelling work of yours as well. I'm so happy that um, you're going to be presenting The Peasant Prince, which is a, a work that I did way back for narrator and orchestra, and it's based on the, the story of uh, Lee Shwin Singh, who's Mayor's Last Dancer, and I think um, people would be familiar with that story, and he wrote a book, a children's book, called The Peasant Prince, and I remember my twins are 20 now, but when they were like three or four, sitting on the couch with them, having to choose a book to, to set for this commission, and being really struck by the, the story, it really grabbed me, and it was very easy to to write this, this work for narrator and orchestra. Oh, well, it's going to be a great year that we're going to have with you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're really looking forward to hearing those works Thank next you. year. Thank you. Thank Katie Abbott. <laughs> now, of course, getting the season on sale is always a huge effort for the marketing and sales team at the MSO. We have Shannon Toyne, who looks after the box office team, who many of you will be speaking with over the coming weeks. I hope you will be. Can you please welcome Shannon? Thanks for joining us. Now, of course, I see you'd expect you to be one of the first people who can get your hands on a copy of this magnificent document. It looks fantastic. Yes. You happy with it? No, I'm very happy. It's hot property. It looks great. Had a flick through. Very exciting. Very exciting. And now your team is really uh, the MSO frontline, and the next couple of weeks are going to be particularly busy, aren't they? Yes. Do you think you're ready for that? How do, you, how do you prepare your team for what's about to happen? Oh, imagine if I said we weren't ready. <laughs> we wonderful. are very ready. We're very excited. We have an amazing team of box office attendants who are ready and waiting to take the calls and make the subscription bookings. 
going to be great. Yeah, I mean, it's a very complex process, isn't it? Get, getting ready for that sort of thing. Like, every, there is a picture of every seat in every hall, in every single concert across the whole year. That's so it's it. no know, small undertaking. Yeah, we know the hall by the back of our hands. We know every single seat. I'm just kidding, we don't. But <laughs> we can oh. give some great advice to our subscribers when they call to book. That's great. Um, can, in speaking of that, can you give us a quick summary of how people can purchase their subscriptions for yes. the 2024 season? Absolutely. Well, as of about 57 minutes ago, the website is now live and that is the first place that you can go to make your booking. Otherwise, you can call the box office between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday. Uh, you can visit us in person at the Hamer Hall at the box office between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. until the end of September. Um, or you can send us your booking form. That is absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you, Shannon, and congratulations to you and the whole marketing and sales team on getting the season ready for thank launch. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Thank you. In just a moment, we're going to hear from some musicians of the MSO. But first, we're going to tell you about some of the work the orchestra will be doing away from our main stage in 2024. Over 100 years since MSO's first school's concert, we will welcome 10,000 school students through our doors in 2024. All 10,000 of those tickets will be priced at $9 or under, thanks to a very generous anonymous donation. Our very youngest audience members, the under fives, will have plenty of opportunities to sing, clap, shake, rattle and roll along to, our, to, uh, along to great music in our Jams for Juniors series, which will take place in South Bank, Narry Warren and Geelong. And our slightly older audience members, the five to tens, will be able to experience the full MSO in three performances here in Hamer Hall as part of our classic kids series. Outside of Melbourne, we're going to continue our proud regional touring tradition with concerts in Bendigo, Ballarat, Shepparton, Wangaratta and, of course, Geelong. Now it's time to hear from some of the musicians who will not only be the stars of the 2024 season, but have also been such a massive part of bringing the season together. Please welcome two of our wonderful violas, Chris Moore and Gabrielle Halloran, and Oboe and Blackburn. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Anne, Hi. our audience would know you as an oboe player, but you have another important role at the MSO. You are a member of our artistic committee. Can you tell our audience about how the musicians of MSO are involved in bringing the season together? Yeah, certainly. Thanks, Catherine. So the artistic committee deals with anything, as the name would suggest, that affects the artistic output of the orchestra. So in particular, we look at the programs that are coming up for the following year and we give our feedback. And we also look at the conductors that we've had visit in the previous uh, few months. And we put forward our suggestions for those conductors that we really enjoyed working with and would like to see more of. <coughs> It's very important work. <laughs> it certainly is. Uh, Gabby, you've cu uh, curated one of our chamber concerts for 2024. Um, this year, our chamber series came back uh, to the Awaki Auditorium. We send, saw many of our subscribers return. Can you give us an idea of why the chamber series is so important to you as a musician uh, of the MSO? Oh, yes. Playing chamber music is a vital part of being a musician. All the people at work would agree with me that we do our chamber music on the side, but it's very rewarding. It's like attending musical boot camp in a way, because it really refines your muscles and your ears and everything. And it's lovely to explore the repertoire with friends from the orchestra, the chamber music repertoire. Uh, this concert that we're doing next year in August 2024 is very dear to me because it was originally programmed for uh, August 2020. And we all know what happened that year. <laughs> Not much at all. Um, so it'll be really lovely to revisit it four years later at Iwaki Auditorium with some friends from the orchestra, and especially the Brahms C minor piano quartet. I'm really excited about that because it's such a wonderful, dark and stormy piece with a lot of 
dramatic moments in it. Lots so come of, along. Lots to, of viola solos. No, not so many. A lot of open C strings, which is easy. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that what a viola solo is, an open yeah. C string? Yeah. But come along to a Waikiki Auditorium um, next year and come and hear it. it sounds absolutely <laughs> magnificent. Chris, we've yes. talked to Jaime uh, about his programs. Can you tell us about some of the guest conductors that will be coming to the MSO in 24? Well, I've actually written a list because there are so many of them. And presumably the ones on this list are the ones that got past the artistic committee. <laughs> so so um, there's, there's, there are quite a few that I am looking for. There's Jonathan Hayward is a, um, a young up and coming conductor who's, who's making waves in, in Europe and around the world. Um, we have uh, Lawrence Rennes, who last time I think his concert was either was somewhere between one of the lockdowns, but it was all we did half the program. I'm not quite sure. So he's he's well known to us, and we're really looking forward to seeing him again. He's um, uh, Dutch Maltese terrier. No, I mean <laughs> conductor. Um, he's conducting a concert of Sibelius and Foray Requiem. And speaking of the French, there's some. Um, Fabien Garbel, who, who's a French conductor. Uh, he he's was a trumpet player, actually. It was interesting. Um, but he's a lovely guy, and I particularly enjoyed his concerts when he was here last time, so I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Um, now, we do have also um, a conductor, which I didn't see last time. It was Nodoka uh, Okisawa. Do you, do you girls remember? Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, good. So I, did, I wasn't there, sadly. but um, And I've got a... She was the winner of a competition who I can't really pronounce it, so... Concours international de jeunes chefs d'orchestre de Besançon. There's a lot of French going on here, <laughs> which is, other, in other words, it's the... International competition for young conductors of Besançon. There we go. So, um, <laughs> so, that's, so I'm really looking forward to, to working with her, but she's also working with uh, soloist Stephen Isselis, who's um, an old friend of mine when I was working in the ACO, so I've worked a lot with him, so I'm very much looking forward to that, to that concert. Of course, Umberto Clerici um, is working with uh, Satu Venska also from the ACO, playing Beethoven violin concerto. We can talk about that later, though, because I'm th you think you're going to ask me about that later. <laughs> so anyway, that's about it, really. Oh, yes, and what about um, our new um, sideback young conductor, Leonard Weiss? He's going to be doing a few things with us as well, as long, as, along with Carlo Antonoli, who's the current um, Cybeck Young. That's right, Car conductor. Carlo will be coming back for a yes. few and we'll be looking forward to seeing him. So many great people. Actually, he'll be, coming, he'll be coming here next week to help me out with my Play Direct. That's next right. week, I'm just putting in a plug for my concert next oh. week. Are you around if you're not busy? Uh, anyway. It's going to be great. Um, and Jaime mentioned that he is actually making his Town Hall debut this year, so he'll be conducting there. But there's also three other concerts in that series. Which of those ones are you really looking forward to? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to all of the Town Hall concerts, Nick, because I love playing in the Town Hall. It's such a lovely acoustic to play in. And it also feels a little bit more intimate, so it's, it's a real joy to play in the Town Hall. But look, I guess if I had to pick one, I'd say it would be the concert with Hannah Chang conducting Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony. And there's also a, a bassoon concerto played by, by our very own principal bassoon, Jack Schiller and Mozart's Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. So that would be my pick. Good choice. Chris, in Melbourne, we also perform at the Melbourne Recital Centre. How are these concerts different to those at Town Hall or Hamer Hall? Um, well, um, it's a different address, so... <laughs> it helps. That's a, that's a good start. Um, well, a lot of the concerts that we do at, in the Melbourne Recital Centre are unconducted. Uh, so, you either have a guest coming in who's leading from the, the fiddle, or we've had, we've had um, clarinet. Mm -hmm. What was his name? I can't remember. Michael um, Collins. Michael Collins, Michael Collins Michael that's right, uh, indeed. And myself, uh, uh, directing concerts from the, from the viola. So, these, these, are, these certainly have a bit more of a chamber orchestra feel about them. And the venue itself is, it really, even though it, it, it seats quite a few it's quite a large venue, it seats a lot of people, but it definitely feels somehow like you're closer. Um, you, you, the sound of the hall is just so immediate and you, and you hear everything. It's just a wonderful, wonderful um, experience. And, and you, know, the, you know, we all know what it looks like as well. 
And uh, speaking of the Melbourne Recital Centre, uh, we also do our popular Ears Wide Open series there, uh, and that returns next year with three events, and they'll be focusing on the music of Clara Schumann, uh, Max Richter, and Antonin Dvorak. So I'm quite looking forward to those ones. Mm -hmm. There is a lot to look forward to in our 2024 season, but what is the one thing, be that a program, an artist, a work that you're most looking forward to? Gabby? Oh, well, I'm looking forward to the Beethoven Festival in November with Jaime conducting us. Um, we'll be playing all nine symphonies in two weeks, which is no mean feat, but Jaime's enthusiasm will be infectious, I'm sure, and we'll all go along for the ride. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Marla Free in March with Jaime conducting as well. I mean, who can go past a Marla symphony? And this one is, you know, it really packs a punch. It's got one of the biggest endings of any piece ever written. It's just, it will blow the roof off, so I can't wait. Chris? Oh, I have to say I'm looking forward to every concert that we're playing next year. <laughs> but um, if I'd had to nail it down, I was, as I was talking before about the soloists, I'd probably have to say Stephen Isselis with Noroka, Noroka Okisawa, for sure. And, and a bit I have of to a ask, Russian feel, the program. Will you get to wear that magnificent suit in any of the concerts? <laughs> well, <laughs> sadly, not on stage, because no. we wear tails. We need to have an audience um, survey about tails, whether or not we, <laughs> we stick with them or not. Uh, it's clearly not on, of the, in favour of sticking with the tails. You might be getting that vibe. What do you think? Hands up. Tails? <laughs> no tails. Oh, it's a bit of a 50-50. We'll, we'll set up a QR code. For yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll definitely do that. That brings us to the end of tonight's MSO 2024 season launch. Brochures are available for you to collect in the foyer or to download online. And thank you to all our guests who have joined us tonight. Linda, Jaime, Katie, Chris, and... Gabby and Shannon. And thank you, of course, to all of you for joining us here in Hamer Hall and on our YouTube channel and for your ongoing support of the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra. We're going... Yes, thank you. <laughs> We're going to leave you with a video recapping some of the highlights of the 2024 season. Good night, and we look forward to seeing you at a concert soon. <laughs>